How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio, September 5, 2022, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. We're still here in Chicago tonight, and we've got an NXT show to talk about, Dave. Yeah, you know what else we have to talk big about? Big Worlds Collide show today. What'd you think about it? Yeah, Big World Worlds Collide, and not only that... Um, yeah, there was other stuff going on. Yeah, some other stuff happened, too. But, you know, like, the show started with Larry the Dog running to the ring. That is how the show actually started. Today. Wow. Oh, you didn't see that? No, I didn't see that part. Oh, it was talked about in the press conference when they asked about Larry. Well, I mean, I saw I saw the video of him showing up with Larry the dog. No, Larry, Larry, Larry. I didn't see Larry running to the ring. Le, well, well, he didn't get quite to the ring, but he, he came out the curtain, and he was running down right before the show started. He had his leash on, and it was apropos for uh, the dog went loose, and that was apropos for tonight. We always end up, the last time we were doing this together, we had a crazy weekend. No, you know what happened the last time we did this? The last time we did this, there was a scrum afterwards that went about six hours. <laughs> yes. And we decided that we weren't going to go to the scrums anymore. Yes. And then you did the interview with Tony yesterday. And, and I, when the interview was over... I told him I was going to go to the scrum. You, you all of a sudden alerted us we were going to the scrum. But only to say hi. We were only going to go <laughs> well, to say yes. hi and, and spend five minutes there. And then um, all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose. At the, Thank God we went. We'd have. We, that's I, true. We would really. We would, we'd have been like. We'd have been. I mean, we'd have heard, but it's still. It's better that we went for sure. Well, we not only we not only heard, but I became part of it because you were part. Mister Punk was angry at me today. Yeah, that's part of it. And then, uh, and well, and then also. We're sitting there in this in this press room, and all of a sudden, this police officer is sprinting. Yes. Okay, and I thought, oh, there's a, there's a fight here, you know. But I figured it was some drunks outside causing a disturbance. Little did I know what was actually going on at the time. Well, should we start with the scrum? We could start anywhere you want to start. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, the scrum began, and... Uh, CM Punk was our first guest. CM Punk was our first guest, is the new AW champion, beat John Moxley in the main event. It was a great main event. Great, yeah. Great Incredible match. heat for the match. Yep. And he came in, and the very first thing he wanted to do was talk about Colt S Cabana. Scott, well... Uh, Scott Colton. Yeah. And he asked, um, was it Nick Houseman, I think? If he was friends with Scott... It was Nick Houseman, okay, who's... Uh, he, he goes... He just goes, are you friends with Scott Colton? And then, you know, Nick was kind of beating around the bush and kind of said no. And he was looking for the thing. And then all of a sudden, he starts talking about, I haven't been friends with Scott Colton in 10 years. It's Colt Cabana, by the way. And then he starts with these lies that are being spread. And, you know, which is, at that point, is still okay. You know, I mean, I know... He doesn't like Colt Cabana. That's not a secret. Um, lies being spread. So I figured, and I kind of thought knowing, you know, th th that there was a chance that he would address this. So he, he addressed that. But then when he starts talking about the these EVPs, um, I knew that we were in a lot of trouble. He starts talking about these EVPs who, whatever, what did he say? Don't know nothing about nothing? Or Never something. done anything. I, I, it was hard to tell exactly who he was talking about because clearly he was upset at well, EVPs, Nick, Matt, and Hangman. Well, EVPs, EVPs is, is, is Well, EVPs would be Nick and Matt, but he was also upset at Hangman. Well, he was very upset at and Hangman. And he was also mentioning people that had never done anything or been anywhere. And I was like, you can't possibly be talking about the Young Bucks, like, Right. But he was talking about hang, Hangman. That was might it? have been Hangman he was talking okay, about. Okay, but here, here's... Who here. has been places, but not as much as the Young Bucks. But anyway, he was very angry. But, but here, here's the thing. This is... it's Okay, so so again, now I'm getting off on a ridiculous tangent on here, but it's like, is there like a thing where if you have not been to, to WWE, you've never been anywhere? Because this is the biggest company, aside from WWE, in 20 years, and these guys have all done stuff and before that the biggest company other than WWE in the world was New Japan Pro Wrestling and these people have done stuff there so it's not like they've never done stuff but that's a, a minor tangent in our big story so he continued on he was very upset about the uh, the EVPs and uh, and he mentioned Reseda so we Reseda so he was for sure talking about the young boys and, make, I, and the make, only one the only name that he mentioned of the EVPs he did say Nick's name unless he was talking about another Nick no, you know. but he for sure said Nick 
Okay. So he was he was definitely upset at Nick and the EVPs and Hangman. He was and the, Hangman's the only name he really mentioned though. I mean, sure. he, he went off on Hank well Hangman and 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 Scott Colton Colt Cabana. I mean he those were the two names that he he mentioned the most. Yep. And then uh he was angry at me because uh he said he watched a video and he was angry that I was incredulous that he had come out and did the promo on the hangman, the unscripted promo on the hangman. I was incredulous. And yeah, that's the point. I was like, and I, I explained to him, I said, listen, uh, when I told that story, I said that what you did made a lot of people in the locker room very upset. But I also noted that there were people that stuck up for you because they said that you were defending yourself. From what Hangman had done, like it was right, right, Hangman yeah, yeah, started. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I did tell both sides of the story, and of course yeah. I was incredulous. The guy came out on television, and he did an unscripted promo and made a baby face look like a fool. Of course I'm incredulous about that, but I did give both sides. There was a side that believed that he was in the right because Hangman had done it first. Yes, yes. Months ago, which we'd all forgotten about, but he hadn't yes. forgotten about. Um, and he was... Well, I mean, his thing, because, because and, and, you know, um, I kind of know this his side of the story from this point in the sense that he felt um, on the, this is the Vegas show, um, on that in, the interview that people know about and everything like that, that we were, that he somehow um, felt that he was um, the first million dollar gate in company history in Vegas, that he was, I don't know if it's, what, what's, what's the term, he was risking the million, I mean, the gate, the gate was already in, but I think he felt that like, we were building this big, big show, and you know it's our first million dollar gate, and he was doing this, whatever it was, which was the part of the promo, you know that that he was upset about um, months ago, and then he then he got hurt and hasn't been around, and this was his when he returned, it was his receipt, and that led to the, the this. So tell us what happened tonight. Besides. <laughs> well, apparently there was an altercation after the press conference, and during uh, the press conference. Well, he, well, it was after he left the press conference. Yeah, he he left he left, and then he must have been really really mad. He was obviously very mad. Yes, and uh, you know we had multiple multiple sources state that there was an altercation, and I wasn't there. I don't know everything that happened, but uh, many people said that there was an altercation with Punk and. The Young Bucks. I don't know who else was there, but uh, it happened, and everybody knew about it, and a security guard did, in fact, go running out of the press conference. So, uh, you know, I would I would presume that there were people that did the press conference that knew that this had happened, but Tony Khan did not know that it happened because Tony Khan did not have his phone, and, uh, and nobody told him until after. Who was the last? Was Jericho the end? Jericho was the last one before Tony, and Tony did Okay, so Jericho was the last one, then Tony went for 20 minutes, and then somebody came and was, whispered was that, in his was ear. Was that Raphael? I don't know who Raphael it was. Raphael Morphe, right? Yeah. You know, somebody Ra came and whispered in his ear, and... Uh, so that was that was that right after it ended, when, uh, when, Ra when Raphael said that? I think it was after right after Tony finished wrapping up. Okay. He, someone okay. whispered in his ear, and yeah, yeah, Raphael went. And I don't know what happened then. I don't know what's going to happen now. Uh, we're recording this at 1.41 a.m., and I was told everybody was still at the building, so I don't know what's going on, but it was a bad situation, and everybody was talking about it, and I think that obviously Tony has to figure out what he's going to do, because... There was a melee. Whatever. A melee, you say? Whatever that word means, yes. Well, a melee is... Probably not a good thing. <laughs> it wasn't a good. It's not a good thing. Look, Tony's Tony's in uh, Tony's in a real tough situation, obviously. Which I, we've talked about for weeks that this was boiling over. You know, I mean, this thing was boiling over ever since, really, ever since the the promo that Punk made. You know, that's really what set everything off, I guess. Um, and then since then, it's just been, um, you know, he had to take control. And he, you know, he did call the meeting and it didn't quell anything. It did not address the, the punk thing, but did address it in Forbes and said that punk had nothing to do with Colt Cabana being in Ring of Honor. Um, and he brought that up again today. And um, 
So, and he was asked at the press conference. I mean, you know, after after Punk was gone, but before Tony knew anything that had happened, uh, somebody did ask, like, you know, Punk just went off. I was supposed to. I was going to ask something, but that they didn't get to me. Yeah, he said Punk went off on your EVPs. Yeah. And uh, how are you going to deal with a situation like this? And, you know, Tony's response, and this was only regarding what Punk had said at the press conference. This had nothing to do with anything afterwards. He didn't know yet. You know, he mentioned that they're all great wrestlers, and they're all... They all help build the... Help the, build the guys who tried to help and, build the company. You know, yeah. so, it, you know, it sounded... I don't know what he was going to do, but it sounded from the way he was talking like, well, I'm not going to fire anybody or anything but well, i'm gonna but try thing, to make it all work so they can all remain here okay well of, of course that's what he wants but yes. the thing is is tony in that situation is in front of us until he sorts everything out is not going to say anything about anybody in like like that that situation i mean he was that was the only response he was going to give like, well it's interesting that he gave that response because there were other questions were asked where he just didn't give a response well, but he didn't really, it, it's just sort of like, well, I mean, like he's prepared because he knows these questions are asked because he knows about the turmoil and everyone knows about the turmoil. And, you know, his basic response on, on that is, is that, you know, stuff happens and sometimes we can, sometimes we can do business with it. You know, he was the whole, the whole thing, you know, whether it's Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, which actually like, well, I mean, I sh you know. When I talked to him last night, and I don't know if it was on the air or off the air, but we talked a lot about Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, and we were going through the um, 1997 buy rates, how you know Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels outdrew WrestleMania that year, and so it was kind of like, you know, the idea of we can use this stuff and do matches, and it will have more realism, and that could be really good, and I think it's maybe past that point right now, but... I think from you know that was one of the things that it's like it's not a bad thing that this stuff has gotten out in the sense of you know I mean they could do Punk and Adam Page but I wonder you know at this point if those guys would even work with each other which is another issue you know to do a match but who you know who know, who knows I mean I know people who have been met really really furious at each other and they're totally professional when they wrestle each other that's not unusual either. So that was the uh, post-show drama, and uh, man, I guess we'll find out. Uh, we'll hear a lot, a lot more tomorrow. Yeah, but um, the it's it's going to be, you know, Tony. He's he's gonna. I don't know how he's he's going to sort this one out because I think I would say this is his biggest challenge. Oh. Uh, without, five miles I think it's I think it's been for a couple of weeks but, yeah but um you know he's you know he, he wants to keep all the talent he doesn't want to lose talent and right now he may be in a position or you know unless he's got some really good sleight of hand to get everybody back together but he may be in a position where um you know he's he's gonna lose key people if this is not resolved quickly because I think that um, you know, one side or the other or both, you know, are going to really, uh, it's going to be a really tough situation for them to work with each other right now. Um, I mean, you know, Punk, you know, you know what, what he said. And uh, obviously when he said it the way he did, I thought that it was, I mean, I'm watching Punk saying this and I'm thinking that he is going to make uh, he's he's going to put pressure that he wants those guys, whatever you know. I mean, and the problem is, is that uh, you know, it's it's a problem. It's a problem. it's a bit. I mean, I talked to a lot of people tonight that are there, and uh, I heard sad, embarrassed, uh, things like that. There there are a lot of people there that have been there for a long time, and when this thing first started, there was very much a feeling of. You know, we're starting this thing. It's a family thing. We're we're all friends, family, and uh, it does not feel like that at this point. The well, way that things it, turned it, out tonight, it, it, and there it, are people it, very, very upset about it. it. It can't. It can't. And I mean, it's funny because, um, you know, when I when I m made the term about like you know the, the the all friend, you know, when it was all friends wrestling, you know, like that that joke. It's like it was the it was a really great locker room, and it was all friends wrestling it was a good thing. It wasn't a bad thing because when it became uh, this, I mean, you know, now um, 
we're going to have to wait and see. But there was an explosion. There was an explosion tonight right in front of us, and then another explosion right down the hall from us. Yep. yep. So. Well, we also watched a show, which was uh, a pretty damn great show. And uh, we could talk about the show. If there's anything more we hear tonight, we'll uh, we'll let you know about it. Otherwise, obviously, uh, tomorrow night we'll be here after Raw. Which, my God, it's going to be a long day tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be an in- yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. There's going to be a lot coming out, and um, yeah, the, the I can see I can see some ultimatums happening right now. I really can, and uh, you know, I don't know how. I mean, here's the the other thing too is is CM Punk's the world champion, uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega are the trios champions, and um, you know that's very interesting dynamic as well. And Omega's key guy with the video game, you know, which is a very important thing, which which Tony even mentioned at the at the, at the call. So, um, you know, um, they could. I mean, the optimum thing is to turn this all into an angle, but... Uh, well, to turn it all, in, all into an angle, you have to have everybody on the same page. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no. we're, we're probably in a situation now where people aren't really going to want to work with each other. I know. I mean, I think it was pretty clear from, from Punk's promo before everything else went down that he had no desire to work with Hangman. No. And that was before all of this happened, so... Well, I mean, the other thing, too, is, is um, him... You know, I mean, he was basically, I mean, he, he called MJF a prick, you know, and I don't, I, I mean, I, I there was a dual meaning in that one. Um, I felt... Well, yeah, it was weird because he he buried the EVPs, he buried Hangman, and he did bury MJF, but I, I, mean, I kind of the- presume that had to be storyline because MJF did return, he is challenging Punk, his gimmick is that he's a prick. But but I it, he he did lump it in with the other lumped, guys he, that he really didn't like. He he did lump it in, and the other one too. And he also buried him in a way you don't normally bury him, and he he sort of was like, it, it wasn't like a typical pro wrestling burial, but kind of like you know young guys think they know more than they well, do. See, well, well, see, see that was that was that was the point I was going to make is he ran down you know like and I and I like like in, he no no he has been to a lot of places and he has more experience in in different situations than most of the guys you know not jericho but most of the guys in the dressing room and i think that there's a feeling from him that a lot of these guys um you know i mean his his things i'm trying to draw business i'm trying to do you know like what he you know believes i'm trying to draw money i'm trying to draw business and maybe the feeling that so many of these guys don't know how to do it and he's trying to tell them and one of the things that he did bring up is that they didn't want to listen to him Remember when yep. he, when he's talked about um, what was the analogy that he made? Um, that was he brought up some. Sp- Babe, Babe Ruth, um, Mark McGuire, we have an all star team, and you don't want advice on your swing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he was he was basically there was a rundown of people um, that it sounded like he was trying to talk to and explain. Like this is how you can draw money and things like that, and maybe they were not as receptive to him, and he was very frustrated by that, you know. And that so um, that was another aspect of you know. And he didn't mention any names, so when when you're not mentioning names, he's not like cutting a promo. I think he was talking about he. I mean, he had some very strong dissatisfaction with the company or with players in the company. He loved the company. He made that clear. He absolutely loved the company. It was a great thing and he um you know it's a great place that that people have an alternative. He was very strong on that. But you could tell that, you know, and it's not just two or three guys. It felt like a, he was very frustrated with a lot of young guys. But and and again, like that's not a worked promo because he mentioned no names other than Page, but it wasn't that wasn't specific to just Page. And and even necessarily page, you know, as far as like thinking, you know, you know, I don't, you know, so it was, uh, it was crazy. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The twelve to eighteen new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.